Okay, um, before we get to that, the, the finale, we're, we're going to um, show you some, some outcomes. We've just shown you case reports so far, so now we wanted to show you a population, so to prove that this works not in just isolated cases, that it's, you know, it works across the board. Um, so what we did is we looked at all of the treatments that we've done in our centre um, using the trans or PTK approach that we've just described. And um, we split them up into two groups. So we've got the, the two groups, have, as, as Dan was just explaining, where you can either, we, either, we only did a trans or PTK um, because we didn't know what refractive effects it was going to have, etc. And then there were, there were 30 of those eyes, and then were there were 11 eyes where we decided that we could do a combined transurethial PTK plus either a wavefront guided, this was before we had to properly guide it, since then we'd always use a properly guided, um, or in some cases we were just treating a refraction because the patient was sort of a, a minus eight, um, and you know, we might as well correct minus six of it while we're there. Um, the, the ages were sort of 30 to 70 in both groups. Um, best corrected obviously was very poor, and that was the reason they were having these treatments. Um, now, this is where it starts to get interesting. This is where we can, we can show you, population-wide, um, what happens to the epithelial thickness. So obviously all of these cases, by definition, as we said, have a regular astigmatism, therefore they have a regular epithelium. And so, in some places, the epithelium is going to be much thinner than normal, and in other places, the epithelium is going to be much thicker than normal. So we can, we can look at both the minimum and the maximum epithelial thickness, um, which is shown here. But we're going to, we're going to save that for, for the finale a bit later. Um, and finally, there's one other thing that we looked at, and it's called, we called it the epithelial thickness range, and I'll get to that uh, a little later. So we're looking at the outcomes of the trans PTK group only. Um, first of all, we're looking at uh, visual acuity. So you can see here, this is the uncorrected distance visual acuity. Um, obviously, we weren't trying to correct any refraction in these patients just in the trans PTK. So the uncorrected vision doesn't improve, as you'd expect, but that was not the, the goal. Um, the, what was the goal was to improve the quality of vision. And you can see a dramatic improvement in the best corrected vision here, um, which uh, this is, yeah, which you can see. Ah, sorry, okay. This is the, this is the uncorrected then, just as we said before. So you've got some patients which were getting better, luckily, but also you've got some patients which are getting worse, which is to be expected. Um, Similarly, we weren't trying to treat any refraction, so we had some patients that were becoming more hyperopic and some patients that were becoming more myopic. Um, and this is sort of a very unpredictable thing um, based on the unknown refractive effects of the epithelium. Um, and obviously that means that our accuracy is quite poor, so you, you're getting a change of more than, of more than half a diopter in over 50% of patients and even a change of more than one diopter in about 40%. Um, so you can see just how much the epithelium alone can affect the refraction. So safety-wise, this is you know, the main goal of the treatment. Um, you can see that in this group, 56% gained at least one line of best corrected, and nearly 40% were gaining more than two or more lines. Um, we had only, I think, one eye that lost one line of vision, but um, I think that I was 2020 to begin with. Um, again, the astigmatism, we weren't trying to treat astigmatism, so as expected, there was very little change uh, in astigmatism. And you can see that the, treat the, the, the stability of this variable equivalent is, is pretty good. Um, there's, no, there's no major change over time. So now we're looking at the second group, which is the ones where we did the trans PTK, but also included either a wavefront or a topography guided or just a plain refractive treatment. Um, so now looking at the uncorrected vision, um, you can see that there is an improvement in the uncorrected vision, not a huge improvement. 
Um, but again, the best corrected is showing a significant improvement, which again was the main goal of the treatment. Um, which is shown here, the safety. Um, in this subset of 11 lives, there were 64% which gained one or more line, and there were no loss of lines in the group. Um, the attempted versus achieved plot here now, I mean, most of them were only treating quite low refractive errors, so the main part of the extra ablation is the topography irregularity. So the refractive component is sort of it's not trying to treat very much. Um, there was one case here where we were treating sort of a minus six just to uh, help out with the refraction. But as you can see, there are two outliers which are quite a long way outside one diopter. Um, so that shows that even in the cases where we thought that the epithelium wouldn't have that much of a refractive effect, actually it did. So there's quite a lot, um, there's, there's quite a lot more to learn about uh, what's going on in these cases. Um, so we get pretty good refractive outcomes. We've got 64% within a half, 82% within plus one, which is what we've just seen. Um, astigmatism wise, the astigmatism didn't improve that much. Um, so again, the, the, all these sort of things which are going sort of slightly against doing it all in one because you just don't have as tight a control as you might like over the refraction. So if you can deal with the irregularities first, and then you can handle the rest of it uh, in a second treatment. And again, stability was, was reasonably good. Now, this is getting to the, uh, the, the, the real outcome measure in this group. Um, what we would make, the main aim of the uh, treatment was to regularize the stromal surface. And so we, we came up with a, a way of measuring, quantifying how much we managed to do this. And we, we, so what we, call, what we do is measure what we call the epithelial thickness range. So if we look at the example that we saw earlier, the short flap with the um, nasal, short nasal flap with ablation. So you have the local irregularity here. What we do is the, the epithelial thickness range is then defined as the difference between the maximum epithelial thickness in the location of the irregularity minus the minimum epithelial thickness. So in this case, it was 79 microns next to 43 microns. Remember, this is within one millimeter range. Um, so it's a difference of 36 microns. After the epithelial, uh, the transepithelial PTK procedure, you can see the um, epithelium is much more regular in this in the area of the irregularity. So the epithelial thickness range is now, um, if we take the values at the same locations as we did, as we, as we looked at in, in pre-op, it's now 58 minus 48. Um, so we're down to 10 microns difference in the epithelium. So we've made. This is after the scan, yeah, epithelium, yeah. So this is a this is a a seventy two percent improvement in the stromal surface irregularity. So we're using the the amount of epithelial compensation as a parameter for how much irregularity there is on the surface. And so we looked at that in the whole population, and you can see that before surgery you've got a um, mean of thirty nine microns but going up to as much as nearly 80 microns difference in, in the epithelial thickness profile. Um, and this really shows the effectiveness of this procedure. This is just with one transepithelial PTK. So all of these are just the first, the first treatment. Um, we've managed to, to reduce the mean down by 10 microns down to 29 microns. Um, now if we look at the the ETR in all of the cases, you can see obviously there's some where it works better than others. Um, these sort of these ones down here where it's changed by about 30 microns just with one treatment, um, and it was reduced in 89% of cases. So you can see that it really does work effectively um, across the board. Uh, remember that all of these cases have got totally different sources of irregularity, so different types of surgery, or there might be a scar or something like that. Um, however, 
it, it never will be reduced to zero because the epithelium doesn't fully compensate. So we can never expect to get to zero, but as long as we're improving it enough, then we're doing well. But there are a couple of cases where it didn't get better. The epithelium thickness uh, range was the same after the first transepithelial PTK as it was um, before surgery. And the question is, why? And to answer that question and deliver the, fin the finale as promised, I'm going to hand back to them. <laughs>